Welcome back. In the previous video, we went over this topic, which was the biosynthesis of the amino acid cysteine in humans. And in this video, we're going to go over the biosynthesis of selenocysteine. Now, this is not one of the normal 20 amino acids that you would talk about in a biology or biochemistry course. Um, and a lot of times, this amino acid is not even mentioned, although it is critical for life and it's not like some of the more complicated amino acids that we can't make de novo. Humans can actually biosynthesize selenocysteine. Now, based on the name, you might think it actually comes from cysteine, but in fact, it actually comes from serine, and it's made in a very unique way, unlike any other, any other 20 proteinogenic amino acids. So right here we have a specific tRNA. Now this is the tRNA. This is a tRNA that normally is going to recognize serine, all right? Although there are some differences between the normal serine tRNA and this one, initially notice that this tRNA synthetase is going to react with this tRNA and serine, okay? And it's going to ligate serine onto the tRNA. So that's going to be our building block. Now the second enzyme here is called a serine tRNA kinase. It's going to use ATP. It's going to phosphorylate serine on its hydroxyl group. Remember that serine's R group is an OH, and that OH is going to get phosphorylated by this kinase, making a phosphoserine attached to the tRNA. There's another reaction up here, sort of a side reaction, that leads into this synthesis. It's actually this enzyme down here, selenophosphate synthetase. It takes inorganic selenium and turns it into selenophosphate. It's still inorganic, selenophosphate, and the, the selenophosphate is going to be the selenium donor in the next reaction, which is shown down here. Now, this enzyme is called selenocysteine synthase. It's going to take this phosphoserine on the tRNA, and it's going to perform initially an elimination of phosphate, and then you're going to get, you're going to ligate onto it the selenium of the selenophosphate. And this SEC, by the way, SEC is an abbreviation for selenocysteine. So I'll even put that in up here. So it turns out that the three-letter abbreviation for selenocysteine is SEC. Okay. Now you have a selenocysteine tRNA. Now the question is, if this is a serine tRNA, how is it that the mRNA and the ribosome know exactly where to put the selenocysteine? In other words, why doesn't this just um, get put in anywhere where a serine is supposed to go? Because that would call, cause a faulty protein. Well, it turns out there's a mechanism we're going to look at on the next slide as to how a ribosome knows where to stick this tRNA instead of sticking in a, a normal serine. Okay, otherwise you'd add the wrong amino acid. Now, I'm just going to mention this in very brief detail, but suffice it to say this tRNA with the selenocysteine has the ability to bind a bunch of binding proteins. And just understanding that there's binding proteins there is really important for the function that we're going to look at here. Now, technically there are, there's a little bit of differences between eukaryotes and bacteria, but overall the concept is the same. Okay, so this is all taking place at the ribosome. Now, this is the mRNA. Okay, the mRNA, recall, is a transient carrier of genetic information that tells the ribosome which amino acid to add next. Now, the codon for selenocysteine is UGA. That tells the ribosome you need to put a selenocysteine right here, but why doesn't it put a serine there instead by accident? Well, it turns out that in its different lengths down the mRNA, in bacteria, it's a lot closer to the UGA codon. In eukaryotes, it's, it's a lot farther away, but it's called an SECIS, and that stands for selenocysteine insertion sequence, okay? And this sequence is is in the mRNA downstream, towards the, more towards the three prime end, in any mRNA that needs to code for a selenocysteine, okay? And it forms sort of a hairpin kind of structure that puts a massive sort of tertiary structure into the mRNA that is recognized by these binding proteins. And who cares about what the binding proteins are? Suffice to say, the binding proteins on one side recognize the tRNA with the selenocysteine, on the other side, they recognize this uh, secus, or this selenocysteine insertion sequence, this tertiary structure right here. They recognize this. And in doing so, they bind with the mRNA on this, this hairpin-like structure, and they sort of direct the tRNA into the spot where it needs to be add the selenocysteine. Okay? 
If this was not supposed to be a selenocysteine, it was supposed to be a serine, this tertiary structure right here would not exist. It would just sort of, we would just see it kind of go flat like this. It wouldn't have this. So anywhere you need to add a selenocysteine where there's a UGA codon, it has this hairpin structure. And that attracts the binding proteins which direct that tRNA into the particular active site of the ribosome so that selenocysteine can be added. So that's how the ribosome knows where to put the selenocysteine and also it knows not to put a serine. Okay, so that's also really important. All right, thanks for watching this video. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications.